Hi guys, in this session we're going to be talking about conjugate root theorem. Let's get started. Now, if you have forgotten what um, conjugate is, um, here's just a quick example. This is what we call a conjugate pair, or pairs. If you have 1 plus i, then the conjugate pair, or conjugate of this number, would be 1 minus i. Another example would be, if you have 2 plus 3i, then the conjugate of this would be 2 minus 3i. Now, what the um, conjugate root theorem, what it actually says, is this. If um, a plus bi is a root, then a minus bi is also a root. Um, that's basically the kind of gist of it. Like, if you have a plus bi, a complex number, as a root, then the conjugate of that complex number will also be a root. So let's say if we take z is equal to a plus bi, then if this is a root, according to the um, factor theorem, p of z would equal 0. And we can almost do the same thing for the conjugate version of this, which is p, p of um, the conjugate of z would also equal to 0. So the basic idea is if a plus ib is a root, then uh, a minus ib is also a root, all right? And that's what the conjugate root theorem states. Okay, let's have a look at a, an example and hopefully kind of get the hang of this. So here's the question. Determine the roots of 2x cubed plus 9x squared plus 8x minus 39, given that minus 3 plus 2i is a root, and then factorize the polynomial. So we've been given one clue. And we know that from the conjugate theorem, oh, sorry, conjugate root theorem, that if minus 3 plus 2i is a root, then we can say that minus 3 minus 2i is also a root. So with that in mind, what we can do is, we know that this is x cubed, which means it's going to have three factors. So we can write the first one. The first one is going to be x minus and in brackets, it's going to be minus 3 plus 2i. The second root, or the second factor, sorry, would be x minus the conjugate version of this, which is minus 3 minus 2i. And finally, the last factor, which we have no idea of what it is, is going to be ax plus b. So, with this in mind, what we can look at is the coefficient of x cubed because we know that x multiplied by x multiplied by ax should equal 2x cubed. So what we have is x times x times a of x should equal 2x cubed. Simplifying this, we're going to get ax cubed is 2x cubed, which means a is equal to 2. Now, we got to work out what b is. And we know that that's when um, the remaining part of it, when you multiply it, it gives out the constant. So we'd have negative 3, well, negative minus, sorry, I've said too many negatives there. Let's try that again. Negative of negative 3 plus 2i multiplied by negative of negative 3 minus 2i multiplied by b should equal minus 39. So writing this all down, I've got negative minus 3 plus 2i multiplied by negative minus 3 minus 2i multiplied by b should equal minus 39 because that's the constant and that's how we get the constant here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand and oh, sorry not expand simplify this I'm going to get negative 3 plus 2i multiplied by negative 3 minus 2i multiplied by b should equal minus 39. Now those two complex numbers, um, they're going to multiply to 9 plus 4, b, which equals minus 39, which means 13b equals minus 39, and b is equal to negative 3. So once we have a and b, we can actually factorize, we've, we've just factorized the polynomial, because the polynomial factorizes to x minus minus 3 plus 2i, multiplied by x minus minus 3 minus 2i and of course ax plus b is 2x minus 3. 
All right, guys. Um, so basically, just remember with conjugate root theorem is that if you have a complex number, which is um, one of them is a root, then the conjugate version of that complex number will be the uh, will be another root as well. Okay, and that's basically it for this session. So thanks for watching.